Next question is from T. Cirque. How long to stick to a program? So well, it depends on the program. If they if they broke up, if they have phasing. And yeah, stuff I was just gonna say what you want to think about is this: is that you have your big program goal, but then within your program, you should have changes to the workout to keep moving you in that particular direction. So, for example, Maps Anabolic, right? This is our foundational workout program. The main goal of Maps Anabolic is strength muscle, and then for those people who want fat loss, metabolism boosting. And it's a very effective program for that. But when you break the program down, you have three phases. And if you count pre-phase, you have four phases. And each phase is pretty different. The different rep ranges, different tempo, different rest periods, even different combinations of exercises. Now, each one of those phases, though, works towards that ultimate goal. Now, that all being said, your big ultimate goal you probably ideally, and this depends. If I'm talking to an athlete, it's going to be much longer. Like if you're a power lifter, then most of the time you're training, it's to get better at power lifting. But if your main goal is overall fitness, overall muscle building and fat loss and health, I think you should change the big goal probably every three, four months is what I would say, where you go from like max muscle building to athletic performance and functionality to sculpting the body to correctional exercise. I think that's the kind of a general but good advice, right? About three, four months. Yeah, no, this question also highlights too um, how and why we priced our programs the way we did. So I remember when we first were, you know, looking at on you know, looking in the space as far as like, what does the average uh, online, digital online program sell for? Low end, high end, and you know, what, where, what does it look like? The average program online, you can find programs all day for like twenty seven to fifty nine dollars, like give or thirty give, day. Uh, yeah, but they're they're all ones. like a single phase. Yeah, you know, and that and you should be done with that after. You shouldn't repeat that program over and over. Where when we wrote the maps programs, we wrote them with the intent you could potentially follow it over and over. So yes. it, it was not something that you had to do and move on from that. You technically could do maps anabolic two, three, four times in a row because the way we phase you in and out. Now, I do think there's tremendous value in what you said is, yeah, after like three or four months, it's actually really good to even move on to another goal. But you technically could stay in that that with that goal and actually continue, especially for a beginner who's really just starting to start their their journey. You could run anabolic two, three times in a row because of the way we built in the phasing, which is also why we price it higher because it's almost like three individual programs built into one. Exactly, but right. ideally, right? Um, just use our programs as an example. Ideally, you would go like maps anabolic to maps performance to maps aesthetic, which is about. Nine months, right? That gives you nine months of kind of workout programming. And then, like you said, Adam, within each program, there are individual phases, which technically, you're right, could totally be considered yeah. workouts. Well, then, themselves. too, like there, there's other uh, factors, you know, that go into play with that in terms of like when the joints inevitably start talking to you okay you're staying in the same plane a bit too long you're 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 doing barbell training specifically exclusively a bit too long um and, and all these things that aren't like you know coming back to, to to reinforce the integrity of of the joints and and really even like address that at all and so th this is why we we do recommend like you know anabolic to performance then it's aesthetic too that's there's rhyme and reason behind the whole thing but um i, I think that um if you're just like trying to figure all this out on your own, it's quite a lot to consider. Like, how are you going to weave that into your programming uh, and really account for that so you can still progress? Like, we want to make sure you're still progressing and you're not going to hit that wall or hit a place where, you know, your your shoulder is going to give out at you at some point because, you know, you've just been overwhelming it uh, with a lot of stress. That's such a good point. And I know I just said that you could technically run anabolic, one of those programs, two, three, four times in a row. But what happens to most most people, if you do that, is exactly what you, start you just said. You to stress the, the yeah, the, be, because anabolic is is heavily dominated by bilateral movements and in the sagittal plane, almost everything in there. Right. And in doing that, you really limit uh, what the body is capable of doing. And we, when we wrote performance, that was why it was because this is a good time to address this because I got a question recently uh, in one of my uh, stories about why performance? What was the logic behind performance after? Well, that's exactly the logic. We, we looked at it as if someone's training in just the sagittal plane bilaterally in uh, almost all their exercises for three months consistently, even if they're progressing beautifully and could technically do that again and continue to see 
muscle building and fat loss goals, we think for overall optimization for like joint health and overall health, it would be very wise to do some unilateral stuff, multi-plane stuff, do mobility work to complement that work before you move on to another totally. phase. So to that point, yes, you could run our programs, like that, but we thought about all of that when we wrote the order of it. And there is more to it than just, oh, okay, you should train like a strong person. Oh, you should train like a mobile person. Oh, you should train like a aesthetic person. It's not just that basic. There, We took into consideration uh, all the, the common things that you would see arise from training in one of those programs. Yeah, because inevitably, what do you see? You see uh, like like elbow sleeves, knee sleeves, like you see yeah. like wrist wraps, like, yep. you know, all that stuff starts to kind of come into uh, the sessions because just the inevitable happens where it's just, it's, it's repetitive stress on the joints that just uh, adds up. 